Hi, this is Bonnie Thompson here at Black Bay Rock Farm with our weekly farm tour. Today we're going to talk about squash. Um, I know a little bit about a very little few kinds of squash and so today I brought along my husband who is a subject matter expert on this to help us identify all the fun things that we're going to see on the farm today. So, and I'm behind the camera so that's he's why he's behind get to the see camera me. so he can't get see. All right so let's start with everybody knows what this is. At least I think most everybody knows what this is. This is zucchini. And the thing that you're supposed to remember about zucchini is never, ever, ever wait one day to pick the zucchini because tomorrow that will be twice as big and then you'll have to figure out what to do with twice as much zucchini because we picked zucchini yesterday we morning, picked zucchini yesterday morning and, and look at how... afternoon. So it's been uh, 36 <laughs> hours since we picked 30, that's what happened. 36 hours because yesterday that one was too small and now it is perfect, but we aren't planning to pick until tomorrow, tomorrow and it's going to be huge. So that's the zucchini. We've got a whole row of squash here, of what we call summer squash. And you'll kind of see it referred to as that. Although when you're asking for summer squash, if you ask for it at a farmer's market, most likely what you're going to get is not zucchini. They're probably going to hand you a yellow squash, and I'll show you one of those in a minute. They come in a couple of varieties. So here is a, I would say, a straight neck. So it looks very much like a zucchini, only it is yellow and they taste almost identical. I use them both in zucchini bread or for, um, let's see, I made bread and butter pickles out of them one time. Instead of using cucumbers, I used summer, summer squash. And if we go down here, we are not quite sure why these are starting to turn, the leaves are turning yellow. Just so you know, that's what a blossom looks like. Isn't that pretty? So there's a blossom and then you can see just a couple of little ones. These also come in what's called a crook neck variety where they're actually kind of curved, Next which, is patty pan. which is kind of fun. Next, you have one of my all time favorites as far as cute. These are called patty pans. They look like little saucers. And you know what's so cool about them? I don't know if you can see this very well. They're round. And so if you slice them this way, they're almost exactly like a hamburger patty size and they grill up beautifully on your grill. So. They hold together better than the zucchini does on a grill. They're a little more substantial in the middle. Still not very many seeds and super delicious. And then finally, Scott's down here looking for something. Oh, I think he found. Well, that's actually a crook neck. A, cro not a crook neck that didn't crook. Look at this. But it is a different dimension. A little different shape. shape. And you can see it's kind of more of a bulb on the bottom and then a, a skinnier top. So again, can be used exactly like a zucchini really tasty. Okay, now like for usual, we have to take a walk along the farm and check out the blueberries that we were checking out a couple weeks ago. They're doing quite well. We are almost done with one variety. We are done with Dukes and are now picking uh, Legacies and Chandlers. Okay, and you guys, if you saw the post that I put on Facebook with the Chandlers, um, it's a cutting board with uh, three blueberries and a quarter on it. That's how big they are. They've gotten huge, but they're really flavorful and super tender. So um, if you ever get a chance to find them, try some of those, I'd highly recommend it. However, they don't work real well for bread because there's such a big cherry or <laughs> cherry, a big chunk of berry in there that um, the bread doesn't hold together in that spot and it wants to just kind of fall off the loaf. So. And they won't cook all the way through when you do pancakes because they cook for such a short period of time. See, another good thing to know if you guys like blueberry pancakes, don't get Chandler's. Try something else. All right, so now we are off to... Uh, winter squash. Winter squashes. So winter squashes are the things you think of, of when you think of um, acorn squash, butternuts, and they really help because um, they can store usually for quite a while. So here is a... Uh, that is actually uh, going to be a pumpkin. That's going to be a. Oh, that's going to be a pumpkin. That's going to be a pumpkin. Yes, we have pumpkins and winter squash both mixed in here. This one is. Uh, All right. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, this is Marina de Chiogia or uh, something. I probably butchered the French, uh, but it will become a blue cooking pumpkin. A blue cooking pumpkin. Wow, I'm excited to see that one. So this one's new for us this year, and apparently that is going to turn blue. It's a blue co cooking pumpkin. All right, and so just so you guys can see the different stages again, here's a little one. Here's a blossom. Okay, there's a bee doing what bees are supposed to do. Look at that little guy working. All right, 
you can see these guys run. So we got little ones here. It's not where he's supposed to be. He's way out in the aisle. Here's some more. This looks like a different kind over here. I don't know what it is. Oh, maybe it's the same one. The fun thing, this is like Easter egg hunting because you have to dig around in through the different, <laughs> in through here. And uh, I'm starting to see some color though, honey. What are these? Uh, I'm not sure and I can't find the tag. Oh, we can't find the tag. So here's a mystery squash that looks super good. Look at those guys. Uh, that is going to be, uh, it might be a red Hubbard that hasn't turned red yet. Oh, that was maybe on their way to becoming a red Hubbard, Scott says. So we'll I see if they, hasn't turned red it yet. hasn't turned red yet. Um, so, I, you know, I should have brought the map along, Bonnie. <laughs> things that I'm learning you know, are, uh, been a really good idea, wouldn't it? are, you have to know when things are ripe, because to me, those look like they're about ready to go, and apparently if they're supposed to be red, they are not. So, just like the green peppers I keep eating that Andrew, keep, our son, keeps telling me I'm supposed to wait until they're red, but they look beautiful and green and ready to go, and so, yeah. Okay, another new variety here. Okay, another new variety. What's that one? Oh, I don't know. Oh, you don't I mean, know? We came to another new, <laughs> new spot. The, the uh, tags that we put into everything are hiding because everything's gotten so big. It seemed, it seemed like a good idea at the time. When yeah. I, them in. I was, hey, I was stand unprepared. up so they can see how tall these have gotten. All right, there's Scott, and they're, well, so they're up to about his elbow ish. Yeah, so these have gotten really big. But you can see the orange through here, and uh, they're they're coming along. But we don't know what they are, so I'm gonna have to post pictures for you guys with the varieties later, so you can yeah, you can actually idea, you can actually that. learn what some of these are, and then ask for them if you're interested in them. Well, while he's digging around looking for that, these guys again are running way out here. Oh, something exciting! Just just for an update, we have the tallest corn we've ever had. That's it, right back there, it's tasseling in. Uh, that um, one is the bicolor. Bicolor. And then, yep. One down here is the yellow. And this one's yellow down here. We've never had corn that looks this good since we started farming on this property. So we are super excited about that. And so yeah, you can see how tall it is. There you go. Look at seven feet tall, a little farther down. He's standing down. in his cornfield. I'll bite. I'll bite. It's outstanding in his field. Outstanding in his field, although it's a little field. Let's see what else do we okay, got we here. Okay, we change varieties again. Do you know what it is? This no, time? no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but I can tell by their foliage that it changes again. So apparently, if any of you guys have really good organizational skills and are oh, good with oh, oh, signs, is, uh, we need a... Uh, this is um, Cushaw of Illinois. Oh, this is Cushaw of Illinois. Cushaw of Illinois, yes. I'm so quite sure. I have to tell you a yes. funny, funny is, story right about right Scott and squash. Here we go. That's Cushaw of Illinois. Now, this one came from Baker Seeds, and this was supposedly Abraham Lincoln's favorite squash. All right, so you guys have it. We have Abraham Lincoln's favorite squash, and we're going to get to try it this fall. So um, we're excited about this. That, that's the biggest one I see. They do get bigger than that. So, I'm just not seeing a better one. Than so that. you know how some people are, like, really into World War II movies or World War II books, or they're really into autobiographies? Scott is really into obscure squash. And so... Yeah, yeah okay. Don't step on that one. So he, uh, two years ago, we were watching an episode of Andy Griffith, and he decided that he wanted to have um, the squash that was in Andy Griffith's show in one particular episode. And so hunted it down and we got it. Was, was that the candy? North Georgia candy roasters. North Georgia candy roasters. So we grew these things. They were gigantic. They were almost as big as me. And um, one of them would feed like a family of... A hundred. Oh, no, 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 no. That was the Naples Long. Oh, that pumpkin. was the Naples Long. That was 60 pounds. 60 pounds for the Naples Longs. So yeah, we always was have... The, that was the same time. Though. That was we same always day. have all these different squash. So if you're ever looking for a strange and obscure squash, contact Scott. Or if you have any recommendations. Or if you have any recommendations. Of strange and obscure squash yep. to grow. So I don't know what he's looking at right now. He's I trying think, to find a tag. But these... We might be into butter cups. These look like butter cups. Yes, that's buttercup. Yeah, aren't they pretty? I love that green on right green there. Now, when I was growing up, I didn't know there was any winter squash other than buttercup, because that was the only thing that <laughs> my my dad would grow in the garden. Oh, they're definitely very pretty. So those are coming along. So these guys will all they get produce really well, and they'll get ripe, and then they'll they'll store for a while. Oh, these they will store. Buttercups will store until March. Until March. So quite a long while. That, that's why my my parents love them. So. 
And that's really nice because, you know, when the garden starts producing less and less and you want to still have fresh you stuff. You might just pan over the corn and show the different good, so. plantings. Okay. So here we go. These guys have been in not 10 days. 10 days. And then these guys have been in two weeks plus 10 days. Two weeks and 10 days. And four weeks and 10 days. And then four weeks and 10 days. So you can see the difference. Pretty cool, huh? And that way we hopefully will have corn for longer than just having it all come at one time. These guys need to grow though. So uh, send them some encouragement. Uh, winter luxury. Okay, we're at winter luxury. Winter luxury. Here we go. Isn't that pretty? I like that one. We haven't had this one before. No, we haven't had this one before. New stuff um, to try. Here's another one down here. There, so you can uh, it's see. A, definitely an eating pumpkin. It's an eating, an eating pumpkin. And it, it, it always looks like it's kind of fuzzy on the outside, but it's really, it, it actually it does have a texture. Like a it does have a texture surface to it. Yeah, it almost looks like a melon. Those are going to be these pretty. These struggled a bit. We had to replant these. They, 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 had a, they had a rough start. So this is not our, this is not our best work this year. Okay. But they're, they're looking okay. And what do we have here? Oh, spaghetti squash. Spaghetti squash. If uh, you guys you can see down here, some of them are getting close to ripe. If you haven't tried spaghetti squash, you've got to try spaghetti squash. My favorite is just, <laughs> well, <laughs> this is definitely the newfangled way of doing this. My favorite is to slice it in half, stick it in a, some sort of a microwave safe dish, <laughs> put some saran wrap over the top of it and cook it until it's soft. And then you just take a fork and it looks like spaghetti noodles. And I like it with a little bit of this stuff that we have called called Slap Your Mama. It's a Cajun spice mix and some sour cream. And that is my favorite way to eat spaghetti sauce. Not probably as traditional as putting marinara sauce on it, but you can see the difference. Let's see if I can show you these two. Um, well, so the one's one kind of- there that's getting close to right. Yeah, there we go. So you've got, if I can back up, so you've got all the three different colors here, so you can kind of see the progression until it gets ripe. So you're looking for that riper color over there. Those are one of my all-time favorites as far These as squash goes. These had a tough start because they got attacked by insects. Very first oh. thing we planted them out. So uh, none of the other ones did, just that variety. So insects uh, This like is delicata. This. Okay, this is delicata. A lot mm -hmm. of really popular a couple years ago. These aren't real big, so if you but look, these are getting these will be bigger over here. See yeah. these? these oh, these are right. getting nice yeah. and big over here. Yeah. yeah. Oh wow, look at that one. I've never seen one that big. Um, really nice flavor, delicate. I I struggle to do anything with those on the grill because they seem to want to uh, kind of fall fall apart, and they're very prickly. Just if you um, are ever in a delicata, see those prickles. Be very careful. They get you. Probably why the insects don't bother them. Um, all right. So all delicatas. Del they were very popular a couple of years ago, and then last year, last year we didn't have very many. <laughs> so uh, these are acorns. These are very dark. It's difficult to see them against the all right. mulch. There we go. So when well, you got one right there too. I got one right here. Look at that. So the acorn squash, you'll see these, they'll turn kind of an orangey color. On the bottom. On the bottom. Underneath, we'll see where it's not been exposed oh, there you to go. sun. It's yellow. When that gets a deep orange, then we'll know that it's ripe. So it's, it's well, it just... Oh, you broke it. It's ripe enough off the vine as well. <laughs> Again, those store really nicely. Um, and then, you know, traditionally for Thanksgiving, I think that it's a cool uh, side dish because you can mix it up with uh, maple syrup and butter and you don't have to call it dessert you can just call it a side dish my husband is glaring at me because i like side dishes that that i can eat my dessert and feel well, good about are, it these are mini blue hubbards these are mini blue hubbards uh, a typical blue hubbard's going to run 14 to 20 pounds and a lot of people don't know what to do with a 20 pound squash so these are going to be smaller. They're going to be more in the five to seven or eight pound range. And a lot of people don't know what to do with a five to seven pound squash either, but it's definitely easier than a 15 or 20 pound squash. Really good. Um, we made pumpkin pies out of them last year, didn't we? Uh, we did. Yeah. And um, they have we been did. used to make beer at one of our favorite breweries. Oh, right and one of the breweries made beer out of them. Yeah. Yep. So um, it was my granddad's. Uh, all-time favorite squash and it was important to him to always have one uh, for Christmas to have a blue Hubbard squash at Christmas really yep that's cool uh, this is butternut 
Brown They're sienny. very small still, it appears. <laughs> lots of nice foliage. See, this is when you need to go hunting. I see blossoms, but I don't see well, any yet. Just be, oh, there's the teeny tiny one. Look at that. This may be slow coming. So that guy will hopefully get much, much bigger and have that. But it's still got well, that they little... they really are slow coming. Huh? They got that little traditional butternut. See yeah. it? Yeah. Butternut shape. Those ones are also really good. The thing about butternuts is nice is that the seeds are all contained down in the little round end of them. So you get a whole bunch of good stuff to eat and not a lot of seeds because that's what you want unless you like to roast seeds. Okay, so we got uh, more varieties here. We're actually, we're getting into pumpkins. Oh, sorry. Now we're switching over to pumpkins. We're going to do pumpkins now as well? We'll do a few pumpkins. Do, do pumpkins too, okay. Yeah. So I believe this is Dynasty. So here's pumpkins. This is a pumpkin called Dynasty. And we're trying some from a company called the Outstanding Seed Company from Pennsylvania. A couple more. And Dynasty, I believe, is one of their varieties. Uh, we're trying four or five of their varieties this year. Yeah, we're um, doing a little, a little more of some specialty pumpkins just for some different kinds. And then, um, but you can see even, it's really hard to, um, when they get a lot on there, you're going to get small ones and they're ripening up and the big ones a little further behind. So we've got quite a few on this plant. And typically really pretty. we'll get two or three, typically two pumpkins per plant with the bigger ones. Two pumpkins per plant. Uh, is this something different? It's a very different shape. Uh, you know, look at that. It is a different shape and I don't believe it is something different. I think it's just a different <laughs> shape on the same variety. Yeah, just a very different shape. Yeah. This is a nice one. So next year, you'll have to come back and see if we got our, our uh, tagging better. All right, look at that guy. Pumpkins like really, really rich soil. And so as we go through here, you can see Scott walking down through there. There's, we don't have a path anymore. Um, putting compost or different kinds of manure and stuff can really help these guys grow. They are heavy, heavy feeders, and they really like it when there's a lot of stuff. In fact, if you throw an old pumpkin on your compost pile, you will probably come back next year and have pumpkins growing and they'll be beautiful because they're very happy in their environment. All right, let's see what he's finding for us now. Um, I believe this is, this is going to be, this is a small, oh, here we go. Uh, bright yellow pumpkin. You can see it down in here. Oh, here we go. Um, so this is going to be small, not typically that small, more like this size here. It's a bit of an upright, but it will become a, a brilliant yellow. Oh, it will be orange. Be bright yellow it's instead of orange. Bright yellow. And that's another Ooh, one that came from outstanding. Pumpkin. Yep, that's another one that came from outstanding seed. A couple hiding over um, in there, I can see. I can see actually quite a bit. These are going to be fun to try and find. So, if for pumpkins, usually about the time they're ready to be picked, all the vines have died back. And so you just come out and there's pumpkins and you don't have to try and weed through all of this you stuff. Can see it here. Oh, here we go. So oh, those, nice, are yeah, those are going to be pretty. Yeah, those going to be nice. So if you're looking for yellow pumpkins, yellow, what, what do we got so far? Yellow, uh, white, oh, blues. white, blues. Oh, yeah, here we go. This is a nice one here. Uh, this one, I believe, is Rembrandt. Yep. This is Rembrandt. This, again, is from uh, Ooh, Outstanding Seed these. Company. And it will maintain the stripes and the modeling as it as it gets bigger. That's um, cool. These are fairly good size. Look at these. These um, are awesome. So these are kind of these are kind of cool. Those are neat. I these seen these, those these go into the cool category. Yeah. I haven't. But they've just really changed color a lot in the last few days. Those are going to be gorgeous. Be those are almost too pretty to eat. You're going to have to put them on your uh, porch actually, first. These are these are meant to be uh, ornamental. Oh, these are decorative. Right. Okay. Well, then that's good. You can put them on your porch. These are really cool. Every one of them's got a little different personality. This one. Uh, these are white ones. Cool. Down here now. I'm lagging because I'm having so much fun uh, looking at all these different pumpkins. Now we're getting into white and the super moon. Oh my gosh, look at this guy. Wow. I don't, you guys, he's... And that's not, that's not a real big pumpkin. I mean, it's probably only a 15 to 20 pound pumpkin. 15 to 20 pound pumpkin and they're white. But it's white, and they're supposed to hold their color really well. Some white varieties will yellow if they're exposed to the sun, but these are not supposed to. So be. just so you can kind of see these two next to each other, isn't that fun? Could stack up a couple and have a snowman. Uh, actually, we have a whole <laughs> row of stacking pumpkins. Oh, we have stacking pumpkins that too. That we missed. That we missed. Yeah, they were over there, and I don't think we went down that row. We missed Long so Island more. cheese. We missed. Uh, we, we missed a whole row. 
We are um, someplace you guys have never been before. We're on the back edge of our property. Directly behind those trees right there is uh, Highway 30 that runs um, to, from Astoria to a long ways. It goes all the way across uh, the state. It goes all the way across the country. It goes all the way across the country. Um, and on the other side of that is the Columbia River. And on the other side of that is Washington State. So you are looking directly at Washington right now, but you can't see it because of the trees. Uh, okay, so all right, let's see. All right, so these are stacking pumpkins. These are, ouch, these are all the rage. Yeah, so uh, these are probably going to be white stackers. Uh, we have white stackers, blue stackers, and orange stackers. Yeah. Wow. Uh, and different sizes as well. So if you've looked in any of the like home and garden magazines or anything lately, you've probably seen these stacking pumpkins. People pile them up on top of each other, and they're really cool. So we're going to have a bunch of those this year. So that's, yeah, in I different colors, he says. One, oh, my, oh my goodness, it's getting deeper and deeper here. And the problem that we run into here is that you can't uh, tell what's where. Well, we have trees in here. As well. So I don't now, know if you guys here, can see it, but there's. Yeah, I see another. This is a different variety. Now. Oh, here you go. I don't know if you can see it, but Scott's standing by an apple tree that's getting engulfed in pumpkin vines here. Can you see this down here? So that's a different variety. Oh, here we go. Of stacker. That's pretty yellow. That's really yellow. And I don't know if that's going to turn to... Oh, oh my, look at that up there. Do you see it? It's huge. I don't know um, what it is. Yeah, I do, up there. <laughs> Boy, it's good to get out once in a while. He's going to go wander through here. So this is an apple tree, so... Uh, no, actually, that is not. That is, that is not a apple. cherry tree. Cherry tree. That's a North Star sour cherry. One of these days, we'll have Scott take you through the orchard. We may wait until the, the pumpkins are out of here so you can actually <laughs> see it. We might. Because <laughs> they're kind of engulfing everything at the moment. So and, uh, over there and, kind of and this, see, uh, this, uh, let's see. That, I believe, is Cinderella's parrot. I don't want to step on anything. Oh, oh my uh, goodness, that's gorgeous. There's a vine going right into the side of it. There we go. That's you can kind of see beautiful. the size of it. Cinderella's carriage? Yeah, Cinderella's carriage. Nice. And the rest of this row, then, I they're, believe, is... They're huge. If you, I wish you guys could see them in here. The rest of this here. row are the Cinderella's Carriage um, yellow yep. stackers. Um, I, I think, think that's... I think, well, I can just tell you what's in the next row over are all mini pumpkins, weeby littles, and uh, the little little tiny ones that have stripes that are good for uh, making tic-tac-toe and chess board, or checkers boards out of. And then the next row over is a row of Cinnamon Girl... Pie pumpkins. Important um, things about pie pumpkins, yes. So that's a whole row of pie pumpkins, but then we missed the whole row that has blue stackers and Long Island cheese and North Georgia candy roaster. And that was the very first row as we came across and we missed that whole row. So important things, we showed you all the decorative pumpkins for the most part. Uh, the cinnamon girls and the North Georgia candy roasters are amazing for pumpkin and long island cheese and long island cheese are amazing for pumpkin um so if you're looking for pumpkin stuff i actually like the i like the long island cheese right is that what i usually get uh well we also have blue doll yeah blue doll but i think i like a, the long island and andrew cheese. prefers blue doll of course he does so it's it's toss up around here but i rarely use pumpkins but it'd be, but it'd be either blue doll or long island <laughs> cheese for or pumpkin. For if we're going to make pumpkin bread or pumpkin yeah. pie, we'll use one of those too. Or two. pumpkin we, we, whoopie pies. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah we, we rarely use pumpkins for our pumpkin pie. We use one of those other two. Well, they're Taste. pumpkins. They're, they're pumpkins. They're, pumpkins. they're just not tr traditional yeah. shaped pumpkins. Yeah. Um, they've just got amazing flavor, wonderful texture. It's actually smoother than I, than I find that most of the pumpkin, traditional pumpkins are. But one of my favorite recipes, if you guys are looking for a pumpkin recipe, yeah, is the using a little pumpkin. You cut off the top scoop out just scoop out the seeds leave the flesh and then you put in sweet condensed milk and instant rice and you and some spices of course you know it's it's autumn you have to put in nutmeg and cloves and ginger and cinnamon and you bake it until it gets soft and then you take the insides and mix them all in and you have this amazing rice pudding that's pumpkin flavored and you have a bowl to serve it in and it's super and cute and i want to make a recipe for a savory with maybe sausage and rice um, Look at the savory stuff. Oh, it'll be so good though. It'll okay, so then good. we can have two pumpkins, a savory and then yeah, a dessert pumpkin. And dessert. Thank you guys for spending some time with us on your um, Friday afternoon. And we'll look forward to seeing you at the farm someday soon. Bye.